don't even need you. Need the the witch, that's what we were just saying. I'm like, oh, he doesn't show up. We'll just we're just talking about The Witcher the whole time, so it'll be fine. No, oh, no, we're good. Oh, See, now you got me going. I, no, you were going before I came in. <laughs> I'll just try to, try to blame it on the Canadian. Uh, <laughs> Always singing and dancing, so happy. You're all so no, healthy no. with all that health care. So yeah. much health care. So much health. So, so much more health care than we know what to do. <laughs> what to do? Uh, really? <laughs> but yeah, just just bursting with health care. So yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> Oh, man. You should not Canada's make good choices. So That's there you go. Well, there you sometimes. go. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, yeah. Well, it's not, not that. Like, <laughs> Ontario. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just, you know, pretend. Yes, yes. It's all relative. It's all That's relative. very true. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah. Very yeah, I was in Scandinavia. I was in Sweden. Yeah. And um, trying to explain what happens if you don't have health insurance in the U.S. And they were just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you die. And they're like. There's yeah, no yeah, comprehension yeah. at all, so no, no it's, it's it fascinating. Is, yeah. If anybody yeah. hasn't figured out, it's Europe, really. Yeah. <laughs> they've, got, seriously, they've got to figure it out way more than we do. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing, so. Oh, man. Should we officially get started? We probably should officially get started. And then it, it'll just be this. So. Yeah, 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 it'll just be us. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. yeah, so then that thing about Switzerland. Yeah, so Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so thank you for coming on uh, this early... I'm oh, so stuff. glad there's this many people. I really am. Uh, yeah, you yeah. yeah, I was yeah, like, if I'm nothing else, I was like, you and I can we'll just, just chat. Do, yeah, we'll just so, yeah, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I've seen it be much less. So. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. 10 a.m. on a Sunday? Yeah, no Fuck yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to swear, so I hope that's okay for that. Okay, no great. worries. Thank you. Anyway. All right. Um, so, uh, I'm Brandon Crilly. I'm an Ottawa-based uh, writer of science fiction and fantasy. Um, one of the programming leads for CanCon, which is basically Confusion in Ottawa. Um, as well, a columnist and interviewer and reviewer for BlackCape.com, which is why I'm here. Um, sitting down uh, with Cameron Hurley, who is uh, one of the guests of honor here. If you didn't already know, I feel like you probably already know that. Um, and so we're just going to chat. Um, and it's going to be super, super casual. I'll throw some questions. And we'll just kind of banter and go back and forth. Um, very much like Craig Ferguson sort of stuff. Um, so we're talking about Switzerland? I think we're would talking you about. Move to Switzerland? Uh, no, but Sweden, I would move to. Oh, Sweden. What's Sweden? Sweden, I would move to. Um, you know, I was. I've done a couple of cons now in Sweden. Uh, really wonderful people. It's cold. I like the cold. I lived in Fairbanks good. for cold two good. years. Autumn yeah. is also cold. It's cold. No, but yeah, but it gets it gets um, humid in the summer. I oh, that's humidity. true. I yeah, hate humidity. That's true. humidity. Humidity. I live in Dayton, Ohio, right now, Scalzi country, um, nice. and it is. It gets humid in the summer, and I can't stand it. Okay, um, so that's like my, my big thing. Okay. But Sweden, no humidity, okay. um, very lovely people, and if you get outside the cities, they say, yeah. it's fairly affordable. But oh, okay. inside the cities, not so much. And so um, the problem was, of course, we'd have to get our dogs over there. And so anyway, oh, that, okay. was, that was the whole thing. So in Canada, they make it so freaking hard, you have to go through this entire process. You have to have all these pieces of paper that say you didn't commit crimes in foreign countries. Well, Jeez. I mean, we don't. You don't want criminals <laughs> coming in. What's wrong with you? I, mean, I say, as an American, <laughs> yeah. Gosh. When you Gosh, say your immigration like, policies, Canada. Canada. Canada is totally inclusive and has always been inclusive. I don't know what you're talking about. No idea. No, no idea. idea. So, but no, I uh, I have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I did a Spanish book tour earlier this year. Oh, did you? Or last year, yeah. Oh, cool. Um, I was there for two weeks. And that sounds awesome. It was really awesome. Uh, I love Spanish fandom. They are so excited and much younger. To a lot less. I've heard this. Yeah, and some of that is just um, they have money for the arts. Right. <laughs> so, well, that's it. so they have they get free yeah. festivals and free conventions. So you're not paying three hundred dollars yeah. uh, to go to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Where everyone wants to I know. Go. My agent's literally like, well, you can sleep on my couch. Just to listen to that. Like, that is the level we're at, is that, you know, the, the professional writers are like, how the fuck am I going to afford to go to L.A. for the nebulous? Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so they actually have funding for the arts, and uh, there's a great festival called Celsius, which is embroiled in some stuff this year I'm not getting into. But otherwise, it's been a great convention. Uh, and so young people can come in for the day on the train, get in public transit, on the day on the train, hang out, blah, 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 and you just go home today, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's been, it was really awesome to actually see a bunch of really passionate younger fans who are getting into the work, who are spreading the word, who are writing, you yeah. know, young writers too. Um, and they were just so thankful and appreciative, you know, to have us there. I think Brandon Sanderson was there last year, Scalzi was there. Um, Brandon Sanderson, lovely human being. Um, yeah. And, uh, and just, just had a, a magnificent time. They were, they were real sweethearts. They would always ask, like, what's the difference between American fandom 
and Spanish fandom. Like, that fascinated them. They just oh, wanted right. to know. And I said, you know, uh, it's interesting. Sometimes, this is not always true, because confusion is the best con, you're all the best fans. Mm -hmm. um, but I will go to some larger cons in particular, and they're, and online, it feels like sometimes there's a sense of entitlement. Like, I bought this book, so now you owe me all of your time, and you uh, owe me a response, yeah. and you owe me this, you owe me that. Whereas in Spain, I felt like they were just excited how it was there. It was just like, I can't believe you came to my tiny town. I can't believe you came to Spain. Um, it was, it, and they're very much, very warm and open. And if you're like, sorry, I got it. I can't do this or that. Absolutely understandable. Whereas you get a little more pushback sometimes when you're in larger groups um, in the U.S. And I do think there's this a very capitalist, like, I have exchanged money, so I have gotten, and it's, so there's some mindset we get into. Again, that, you know, with George Martin, yeah. you know, and people assuming that, like, they are owed the ending to a series. I'm like, you're really not. You paid for the book, and it's a one-time transaction. So I get that you're, you know, everybody's upset. I mean, I just finished, you know, it took me five years, only four years late, but it's gonna be five years to write the final book in my fantasy series. So I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, I could have been like, well, fuck it, I'm just gonna edit two books, and I can do that because I'm the decider. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm the decider yeah. at the end of the day. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Spain was, was really cool. cool. Um, they are a great group of people. I also met you know, a couple of great writers, and it was, it was funny. There are newer writers, uh, female writers in Spain, um, Felicidad Martinez and Rocia Vega, uh, and we like clicked right away. They had us on this panel together, and we all were like, it was like someone actually said, they said, well, see, Vega's like the Spanish Cameron Hurley. And yeah, and we oh, did. Really? We clicked and we went, oh, <laughs> shit. Um, and awesome. then three of us just really got along. And it was so it was, it was really awesome, especially to do two years in a row where we got to hang out and do panels together and, yeah. and everybody really enjoyed it. So um, it's also really cool just to be peers and yeah. to, to be like, oh, yeah, we're sisters from across the ocean. Yeah, so, okay. That's cool. You made it anywhere else overseas for class and stuff? Or? <sighs> I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, I've been to. Uh, I think I did London. Right, we did um, Brighton had a okay. World Con at some point. One of the worst world, the worst World Con. I'm going to say that was the worst convention I've ever been to. I've never been treated so shittily in my life, Seriously? which I've said, you know, which I've said publicly many times. Why a lot of people <laughs> said, um, I have never. Oh, no, 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 this was the one. Oh no, no, no! I'm public about all this shit Perfect. all the time. So. Perfect. Um, I, they approached me and said, okay, great, you know, again, I'm flying overseas, I'm going to go to this convention. Was this a world fantasy? It was either a world fantasy or a world science, I think it might have been a world fantasy, in okay. um, and, uh, uh, you know, I applied to be on programming just a few years ago, and they put me on a program, one programming item, and it was, uh, it was strong female characters, <laughs> and I said, you know, I, I, I've done enough about strength, but can you put me on a world building panel, on a career panel, on, you know, I, I gave them many suggestions. The email I got back was, no, we can't do that because we only put writers on panels that we believe they are qualified to be on. Oh, <laughs> oh. no. And I'm like, burn this fucker down! <laughs> burn it down, I'm making fuck you! Oh, um, no. And that was, so I said, well, fuck you, I'm not doing anything then. Uh, and that was the one where it was completely an accessible location oh, that they said was accessible. Um, then when we went to go and do um, the signing, where we, they said, they said, yeah, you can come into a mass autograph session, but we're not going to give you a table tent. You're going to make your own table tent. Um, and then they had us all line up, and we're just like sitting there for like half an hour because they had to make sure that like, you know, that the top three or whatever, Neil Gaiman and somebody, somebody, I'm sitting there next to Mary Robin at Cole, we're just sitting there in line, we're looking at each other like, <laughs> I've never been treated so shittily in my life, wow. like just waiting so that Neil Gaiman, and again, Neil's a sweet guy, it is not Neil's issue, it, is, it was the con runners, we're like, oh, we gotta make sure Neil is all right. And I'm like, can we all just go in? He's a fucking professional. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so yeah, it was a it was a terrible con. Um, wow. Where we were all and all of us, like all the pros and and lots of the fans too, were just like that was that was shitty. I think um, I had heard a rumor afterwards that Neil was not exactly happy either. So oh, okay. it was it was all across the board wow. shitty. Um. Wow. So yeah, just treat people nice, like you know. Um, yeah. Because God, we remember. <laughs> we fucking remember. Shannon talks about that a lot. She's like, you fucked me over once, don't remember for forever. I will never forgive you. Yeah, don't fuck Shannon. Yeah. Never, never forget the end of it.
But I didn't do anything with the, really, the flash fiction thing on Friday, right? Like, good. I'm good. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, no, I, th I think you're all right, but I don't know. That's, I, I don't I, know. Who knows? That's yeah. all. I jumped so. in and started answering questions. So maybe I'm <laughs> fucked. Um, so I feel like we had, like, inevitably we were talking about right now, we were talking the other night in the bar, mm, yeah. and, like, you know, deadlines and burnout and all this, this shit. So it, may I ask your opinion on why the fuck do we keep doing this thing, this writing thing? Oh. Like, not qualified to do anything else. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, you know what it is, is because um, I almost have given up like three times. Yeah, at least yeah. twice. At yeah, least twice. Yeah, I've been, been in a really it. low space and said, again, like trying to get this book yeah. out. Um, and again, after my, my first trilogy came out and there was a bunch of bullshit with the publisher, and so the third book kind of did not perform very well. The first book's great. Um, God's War is performed very well, has a cult following, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, you don't know, right? It's, yeah. still, it's all still in print ten years later, that's great. But at the time, it was like, I published three books, the third one tanked, I'm fucked. That was what I thought. I didn't know. And I had an agent at the time who was not right for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to figure out, like, what, what do I have a career? What is going to happen? I don't know. And I kind of was trying to bounce ideas, and that didn't work. She just like, send me a book. And I'm like, but what should I write? I don't know. What's my, anyway, yeah. so I have a new, then I got a new agent, <laughs> I got a new agent, um, and she had actually come to me, and thank goodness, um, because I had done an interview with uh, Tour.com, and basically just talking about my career, and, and you know, yeah, it's nice that there was this book that did okay, but I don't know what to do next, um, and I have this other weird stuff that I want to do, but I'm just not sure, and, um, and then my current agent, yeah, she actually emailed me out of the blue. I mean, she cold called me uh, and said, you know Which what? crazy, by the way. Right, everybody. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> fuck, you an agent cold? She was like 27, though, like at the time. Oh, like she had wow. just started. She had been an agent for two years, and she was young and hungry. Yeah, she was, she was passionate was, about it, yeah. yeah. And she was just like, wow, Cameron Hurley was, is, doesn't have an agent right now, read all three books in like three days, uh, the first three books, uh, and said, send me your proposals, because it's like a famous saga and this weird... This weird gooey thing, which would later turn out to be this weird gooey thing, um, and uh, said, "Hey, I think I would love to work with you on this." And I said, "Well," and again, we started having that strategic conversation. I needed the fuck do I have? Yeah. And she's like, "These books are fucking brilliant. Um, you had a publishing disaster. That's fine. We're gonna restart your career. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that." And she had all these ideas for me, and like gave me this confidence that I needed, right, to be like, "Oh yeah, like stuff like this happens all the time." You know, maybe the again a publisher implodes, a book tanks. It doesn't mean it's over. It just means write faster. <laughs> so people forget. No, they're gonna forget. Write faster. Um, and uh, and yes, yeah, so and then we sold Mirror Empire, the the epic fantasy series there. And then you know after you know I had I had three books come out in one year. That's the other low point. Three books. Yeah, it was yeah, stupid. I was reading about this. It was yeah. really stupid. Yeah. So um, I think or I wrote three books. They didn't. Maybe I'll okay. Anyway, I wrote three books in a year. Uh, Empire Ascendant was coming out that October, uh, and I burnt the fuck out because I kept expecting, especially with Geek Feminist, I thought, this will break out. This is going to sell a bazillion copies, you know, Roxanne Gay's um, uh, Bad Feminist to come out. This is going to sell a million copies. I'm, this is going to be the book. Um, and if that's not the book, then Empire Ascendant will do really well. You know, I kept, I kept pushing for the breakout book, and I was burning really hot, really fast, trying to maintain that momentum, hoping for a breakout book. And instead, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, what I've realized, my career is this. It's a very slow, steady, mm -hmm. building, book to book. I'm not, so far I've not done the, you know, uh, V. Schwab talks about this. She wrote like 11 books before all of a sudden it hit. She got, she, there, she had that base of fans, mm -hmm. uh, and then something clicked, you know, in the coll collective consciousness or whatever, that they were able to launch it out and it became, you know, this big thing. Um, but a lot of times you have to keep doing the work and just keep building on it. Um, but I had been burning hard, yeah. thinking it's going to hit. Any moment it's going to hit. And when it didn't hit, I just crashed. I'm just like, fuck this, fuck publishing. And again, there's some other, there's a lot of back um, publishing business bullshit that I was upset about. Um, and I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. Why am I even doing this? Um, I'm making other people money, and I'm not breaking out, and I'm still working a day job. Um, and I think I'm, one of those years I made like $7,000 writing, and I'm like, I have 
I published six books. How many? Seven thousand dollars this year. Um, really, the Patreon was one of the things that, that really yeah. jump start where it made me go, oh yeah, like there are people who will like my work and enjoy it and will pay for it. And this is actually this. If I was just paying for myself, it would be a sustainable income. Um, but that so that was a revelation too. But that was a really low point. Um, and then this book again, just I I what ended up happening was every time I would open this third book in the World Breaker Saga, every time I'd open the manuscript, I'd just get angry at publishing. I was just angry. And I started to put all that anger and frustration I had about the job and the work onto this poor book. Um, and so I wrote like 90,000 words, and yeah, my agent was just came back to me and was like, this is terrible. <laughs> I wrote this. Her exact words, this isn't very good. And I can't, like I was, I was reading your earlier, yeah. or, like the locus you were talking about. Yeah. I can't imagine getting that. Could you back. imagine? <laughs> but, but here was my thing too, is I have been, and, and we actually were talking about this, about when you put work out publicly and you get feedback back, and a lot of people aren't prepared for it, um, especially when it's very passionate, either, either side things. Um, and I had gone to Clarion when I was 20, Clarion West, mm -hmm. and the second week, I think Jeff Ryman actually, you know, picked up my story and he's like, well, I found this story personally offensive and I think it suffered from a failure of the imagination. And I literally, I had my pen like this and I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, all right, thanks, <laughs> thanks for sharing. Uh, it's good to know I had a passionate reaction from you, Jeff. Um, <laughs> Twenty years ago now, for the rest of my career, I'm hearing that I get the yeah. um, But it got me into that mindset of, and he he told me later, and we had our one on one, and he said, "I'm sorry, I apologize." I said, "No, no, no, you were being true." Um, and he just said, "It." He's like, "You're such a good writer. I don't want you to rely on." It. <laughs> you know, it was like he was like really violent or some shit. Like all my shit is violent. He's like, "I don't want you to rely on this or that's the other thing." Um, because you're such a talented writer. But I am Cameron Hurley, and I write really right. Uh, but it was just very interesting to get that kind of visceral reaction and then to have other people say, actually, I really enjoyed the story. And actually, so it started to teach me how to say, what is the story I want to write? Um, are people giving me uh, responses that will help me refine that vision? Or are they giving me responses based on their own personal trauma or their own personal reading or something that they're bringing to it? Um, and it started me on that journey, which is a continuing journey of how to take feedback mm -hmm. um, to make my vision the one that I want it to be and not get kind of sidelined into trying to make this um, ball of Play-Doh uh, that is not, that just people are like, eh, you know, two stars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it was, I did, I've had a couple really low points. Yeah. Um, this book being off my, my uh, shoulders is like a huge thing. I'm really proud that I finished it. I'm really proud that I, um, yeah, that we didn't, we didn't go the easy route. I took the time to make it correct. I'm glad, again, my core fan base was very supportive. That's good. Um, I saw a few little snarky things, but not, not a lot. Um, but the most of the core fan base totally understood, because again, the, the election happened in there too. Right. So they were like, oh yeah, you were drunk for three months after the election. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I read, like, after the election those three months, I was drunk all the time. And then I also read all of the Sue Grafton novels, all that whole alphabet series. I just, like, mainlined them. I was still comforting their 80s, once you get 80s, you know, uh, 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 80s mysteries. Uh, and I found it super soothing. Um, the self-care. And then after I'd done that, right, I went through my grief. It was a grief process. I went yeah. through my grief process, and then I could come back and, and you know, we could work on the, the book yeah. some more. So it is. It's tough. And I think, yeah. I think a lot of people, you know what it is, it's you have to have a support network. Yeah, absolutely. It has really helped. And, you know, and I have a, a bunch of friends. We started a Slack, um, the Drunken Space Slack. Um, and we're all about the same point in our career. And, you know, I've been talking to them. We've been reconnecting after starting the Slack, like, about a year ago. And they're like, this Slack saved my life. This was a rough year. This really fucking sucked. You think you're alone. You want to bitch about things and this and that. And, there's, and also just um, celebrate things that we can't announce publicly. Yeah. There are lots, lots of things that happen that you know we can never talk about um, publicly. So um, that's been really important. And even after Clarion, for a long time, I had like a group of like five writers who we would email and we would uh, you know talk to each other and. Um, I think that helped keep me going as well. It's nice to know you're not the only one going through it. Yeah, exactly. You're not the only one going, I've just written 17 million books and I'm poor. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. I'm poor. Or, and, it, you know, no one ever, uh, you know, I, I'm, 
you know, I've written 20 books and I've never been a GOH, right? Like, there's things, there's things that midlist writers complain about that, like, noobs would be like, fuck you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Fuck you. <laughs> you have 10 books published and you're complaining because you don't have a Hugo. <laughs> fuck you. Um, so, so you have to have a group of like-minded people yes. who are like, mmm, mm, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, but it does. It helps you through those yeah. dips and, and falls. So, With yeah. this hustle culture that, that we've talked about, mm. um, what do you think is the bigger problem? Do you think the bigger problem is us self-imposing that need to, to hustle, or the rest of the world telling us that we're supposed to be doing that? That we're supposed uh, to be on social media all the time and producing stuff all the time. And like, it, is, are we the problem, or is the world? Like, uh, I can tell you from personal experience, the world is the problem. Okay. Um, and the world, it's not so. It's not the the pressure from the world. It is economics. Oh, okay. It is absolutely economics. I can yeah. tell you having just hustled for 10 months trying yeah. to survive yeah, yeah, <laughs> after yeah. being laid off from my day job. Um, you know, health insurance for me is $850 a month to cover me and my husband. Right. Um, and plus the cost of the medication, the discounted, the beautiful discounts we get because we're, we're paying for health insurance. Anyway, it's a racket. <laughs> um, and you look at all the costs and you look at, you know, what we're expected to do on, you know, certain amounts of income and yeah. the taxes are 30% and the agent gets 15% and when you start doing the math, you're like, fuck. Um, and uh, I think it has become a necessity with the gig culture, with hustle culture, yeah. um, trying to maintain that middle class. The middle class is going away, which yeah, is a exactly, huge yeah. thing we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, all of us, of the vast majority of Americans, like what, 60% or something, um, were one emergency away from being homeless. Yeah. Every single one of us. Uh, I'm one of them, honestly. Yeah. Um, and realizing that is you hustle yeah. because you don't want to die. <laughs> you don't want to live. Live on the street and live in your car. Is the gallows or, humor part of the interview. Right, yeah. Oh, I'm full of gallows humor. That's how I get through. So I get there. No, the day that I was laid off, I was laid off, no health insurance. The health insurance ended that day. No severance, no warning whatsoever. Yeah. Literally, it was, hey, can you come in for a meeting? Oh, yeah, sure. No, there was no, just so you're fired today. And I just started laughing. I just started yeah. laughing. Because what else are you going to do? Yeah, it's either that or have a total meltdown. Have a total meltdown. meltdown. And you know what? I'm kind of over meltdowns. I mean, I've had those too. Yeah. Um, but I just I just found it hilarious. I literally, and then when I saw the HR person, I said, we're all going to be out there with signs on the fucking street. Are you fucking kidding me? She's like, I know. I know. Right? Yeah. They didn't prepare for it. No, they no, And they don't have to. You know, it's an at-will state. Ohio is an at-will state. Right. Um, and uh, I do think, for me, humor has yeah. been huge and important to me. Um, to get through the ups and downs, not just of publishing, but just with life. Yeah. Um, I'm a story by training, which is also really nice because you can see cycles, and yeah. you're like, yeah, you know, other people have been through shit that's very similar, yeah. um, and they've come out, you know, the other side. This is possible. This doesn't mean it's easy. It's yeah. really fucking hard. Yeah. Just get filthy the longer, the yeah, longer, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> longer I finish. Yeah. So, somebody should timestamp. Right? Like, I know. Yeah, every time yeah. Cameron says fuck, take drink. Um, but I find that, yeah, like, yeah. As, like I'm just teaching myself. And yeah, yeah. My students, like, freak out, like, there's, like, all the hashtag World War Three like, yeah, the past yeah. couple weeks, and I'm like, okay, let me, let me talk. Yeah. 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 There was yeah. a time, and, like, yeah. even, like, they have no concept to say Ronald Reagan. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, like, when Ronald Reagan was president, people thought he was fucking nuts. And so, probably was. Probably was. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, you know, I yeah. give a couple of examples, and, and it's important to set that context. I mean, things aren't bad. But, no, yeah. But that, that's where I but can get your optimism from. Exactly. Yeah. But that they have been bad before, yeah. um, and it is possible to get through. And that's not to say, again, that it's not absolutely shitty and people are dying and it's horrible and no. all that. Um, it's saying, in order to keep going, we have to have something. Because it, I, I mean, I've had low, my own low points, right? Yeah. Um, there was, yeah. So, um, I try to keep things in context yeah, um, because I think at some point, you know, you have to go, I can give this much to, you know, fighting it, but at the same time, I'm trying to just survive it. Yeah. Um, and that, that's very hard to realize. You only have so much uh, bandwidth and yeah. a lot of it you're using on hustle yeah. to survive. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, to pay for the medication that literally keeps you alive, um, you'll die in 48 hours without it. Um, and so that balance has also been, you know, difficult. And it, so I do. I use I use humor. I use the understanding of history. I always think, what if Twitter existed during the Reagan years? <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, I tell I told somebody that in Spain. Uh, I got an older editor who lived through Reagan, yeah. uh, and she was like, "Oh my God!" I said, "Right." So I think, uh, you know, there have been always been bad and horrible you know, things, um, and. We see it now, which is great because then we can fight it more easily. But it's also overwhelming. Oh yeah, because we so overwhelming, and we go. But which one should I? 
focus that because our human brains, I think I was I was reading, it's like you can only keep your attention on up to four things at a time. Yeah, that's not. And then you just break down. And it's just I, my brain doesn't do it. And we we're being asked, we're being pulled in so yeah. many different directions. A lot of people I found have found success choosing a cause. You yeah. know, I'm going to work for gay rights. I'm going to work for reproductive rights. I'm going to work for racial justice and trying to focus on particular initiatives and certainly support others as well. Mm -hmm. But by giving all that focus to one, remember that we're all in this together and there are other people who have, you know, focus for these. But it is, it can be really overwhelming. Oh, yeah. You're just I, like, I don't know what to do. And then yeah. you just want to hide, right? Then yeah, that just makes, exactly. and then it, it yeah. freezes you. And then you freeze and then you don't have any, because that's his fight or flight. Yeah. So it's to choose to fight yeah. is to just choose one, I'm going to fight it, and then that will be your outlet. Otherwise, it's just, you're just going to freeze. Yeah, I was reading an article, I think, in The Guardian a couple of weeks ago about civic engagement and the idea that we're, because of social media and whatever, we have so much access to information, and it was actually recommending less of that. Like, yeah. Turn yourself off yeah. from other things going on in the world, and because it's, it's, just it's affecting our reality. Like, the say, like, Australia, <coughs> Australian wildfire oh, is Jesus. more real for us yeah. than, say, the people you see in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And it was a, it was, I hadn't really thought of it that way, that, like, our brain is so focused on all these other things as opposed to what's right in front of us. Because yeah. it's, it's tough, right? Yeah. No, it's really hard, because all the things are important. Yeah. They exactly. absolutely are. Yeah. Exactly. They're all valid, yeah. they're all important, they're all horrifying. Yeah. Um, you try to ignore any of them. And, the yeah, because, well, yeah, you feel like an asshole, but you have to remember, that if you try and give up to everything, yeah. you will freeze. Yeah. And then you're not, then you're useless to anybody. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so my my hope is I can choose to focus on. Okay, this is my thing. I'm going to focus on this. Focus on my work. Yeah. Um, the work has been very important lately. Um, writing Light Brigade was hugely cathartic for me. Mm -hmm. um, I again, it's a leftist. <laughs> It's just a socialist leftist rant. <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. There was some. There's a line. There's a line. Um, some about Anne Rand. Anyway, there's a great line about Anne Rand, and I just, I just was like, yeah, it was very cathartic. Um, so sometimes the work has helped me too. It's just you can put a lot of that, you know, th the thoughts and simmering rage and anger and stuff uh, into into the work itself um, and explore the themes that way, and that that can be helpful too. Yeah. So yeah. Do you think like 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 brigade like that whole punk and, and author's fiction. Do you think that that's kind of the edgy stuff these days? That that's the stuff where people look at and go, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like like whole punk is on the fringe, or do you think that's like? Um, it's that, that makes sense. the fact that it has a name is is already yeah. you know, um, and this has been the last few years. I think people are, you know, we had our grim dark nineties, early two yeah. thousands. Um, which kind of culminated in, oh, this now we're going to get the grimdark. <laughs> we, did we birth it into being? Um, and again, as people said, it's just, it's, it's more, it, these things have always been there, yeah. and I, I try to remember that, yeah. you know, the voice of white supremacy, we've always had, um, and now, you know. Um, so it's almost good, right? The, yeah. the, it's all in the open, and we have to deal with it, which is great. And that's, yeah. I think of it like the puppies and the Hugos. Oh, um, yeah, okay. We had to deal with that shit. Yeah, that something was broken, and we had to deal with it. And it was horrible. It was horrific. It was terrible, and people were hurt. And it was disgusting. But we have to deal with it, and we're still dealing with it. Like this is not this isn't yeah. a conversation that is going to go and on that's forever. Like, yeah, people, people sometimes think, okay, we've dealt with it. It's gone away now. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and and you know our current political stuff. It's something. Yeah. It's forcing us to, you know, especially white people, to, you know, um, un to, to have a reckoning, right? Yeah. Of like, this is what it is. Yeah. Um, you had pretty words and nice things, you know, before, and you thought, oh, da, da, you know, it's great. And um, in fact, this is actually what it is. Yeah. Um, so I look at it, I, I try to, to look at it like that. Um, but Hope Punk, yeah, I think some people, um, there is a, there is a, there's a need in us right now to go, you know, the earth is dying, politics sucks, everyone is, you know, with the doing wants us dead. Why should we bother? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel that all the time. Oh, um, you know, uh, what's the point? Why should I bother? The earth is dead. It's like, the earth is going to be fine. It's us just going to, you know, <laughs> yeah, being a lot fewer of us. And light is like that. It's like, yeah, you know, the earth goes on. There's, you know, four billion people died, but there are another, you know, three billion. Um, so it's... It, Life's gonna go on, yeah. and we, we keep wanting this like end point again. So oh, I don't have to put my money in four hundred and one k. I'm just yeah. gonna drink. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna do whatever. I don't have to plan. Uh, yeah, you know, I have yeah. to plan. I have to think about it. Uh, and in fact, it's like you know, life is gonna keep going. Now it will change dramatically. I think we're we're definitely in this place. You know, certainly in America, where the post war world is World War Two world is dead. Oh yeah. And we are moving to something else. Oh, what was the quote? 
Uh, the past is dead. The new world is being born. Now is the time of monsters. Ooh. Somebody, somebody posted. I don't know who the one is from, but it was so fucking amazing. I was like, yes, I like yes. That. And there have been many of these periods in history, and we're living through one. Yeah. Right. Where we don't know what the new world is going to look like, and it's really scary. Oh, yeah. um, but there is going to be uh, something after, um, and we are we are here to shape it for good or real. Uh, and I think about that too. Um, somebody loved. Uh, I had a, a quote that said, "You know, this timeline needs you." which was, we are the people making the future. Um, so as long as you are here, again, help us in the time, as long as you are here, you can still be part of making whatever that new world is going to be. And that to me is super, again, I, we need something. Yeah. We need a reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's where Hope Punk is becoming, uh, people are looking for that in Hope Punk. They're like, why should we continue? Yes, we know the world is dying. Again, pa Palo Bacci Lupi, the world is dying. We're like, yes. Now we are there, we know Paolo, we love you, thank you, we're living it. Yeah, exactly. um, we don't need the room. Yeah, mostly, yeah, mostly now he's just doing speaking about it. I told you, I told you. Um, and, uh, and so now we know, you know, we know, now it's like, okay, now how do we build a world and how do we fix this shit? How do we go forward? How do we be more hopeful? And I think that's what um, people are reacting to and what they are, you know, want in, in fiction. And I do think we're going to start seeing more stuff that, again, is not quite so grimdark. People call Joe Abercrombie grimdark. Lord Grimdark. His yeah. stuff is actually super funny. And, oh, it's funny. Right? It yeah, it's super funny. Who's your favorite character from those books? Oh, uh, you know, my, no, 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 my, my favorite book is Best Sir Cold with Monza. Oh. Best Sir Cold is my favorite book. And, you know, he said uh, he was halfway through writing that book and thought it was the shittiest book he'd ever written and it was going to ruin his career. He said it on Twitter. Did he? Oh, I didn't yeah. Say that. Oh, Best Sir Cold is my favorite book. The other ones, I'm like, eh, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I think Red Country I, oh, yeah, I liked Red as well. Country. But, um, but Monza, uh, Mercudo, Mercado, yeah, uh, was just an exceptionally done, complex oh, yeah. character. And again, you look at that one and get to the end, and there's some it's a little bit hopeful. People pretend yeah. that it's not because people are vomiting <laughs> and stabbing <laughs> each other and betraying each other. Yeah. And, um, she goes through such a journey. She goes through such a journey. Like, yeah. yeah. And that's what I love about it is it's not. She's not like this static kind of strong female character. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's he's very good at that. Um, yeah, at the, yeah. they're not stereotypical strong female characters, yeah. um, or you know, again, male characters who are uh, again not heroic, yeah, right? Yeah, like, they're yeah. like, oh fuck you! I'm, I took your money to, to be part of the battle, and we're gonna go the other yeah. way. Or yeah. Or right? Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, I know. So. Yeah. Have you read the newest one yet? The, the, like, their I got it for Christmas. Stuff? Yeah, okay. I got it for Christmas, and I haven't read it yet. But yeah, um, I just started it, and and yeah, I think you're gonna like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, people call that grand out, and it's like, no, actually, again, a lot of times you get to the end, and there is, it's not like, and everyone dies, yeah, they blow yeah. up, and they're on fire, you know. I mean, a lot of people die. A lot of people die and blow up, but, but not everybody. Uh, not everybody. Yeah. See, someone had told me <laughs> the difference between a hopeful book in America and a hopeful book in Britain. Oh God. They're like, yeah. They're like, any book. The, the the British guy was like, yeah, you know, if I get to the end of a book and the protagonist and everybody's still alive, that's hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody's dead, <laughs> then it's a British book, and it's like, yeah. oh, that's, that's sorry. But he's oh, like, yeah, in America, you know, we have this. Oh, everything we have, we want those neater endings, and yeah, Britain's like, is everyone alive? All right. <laughs> yeah, because I I've seen that book. God's were my first novel, and uh, he's like, no, no, they all live to the end. Spoilers. They, well, most of them, most of them live to the end. Most of them. Uh, and There's he's like, it's fine, right? I know, right? I don't know. It's been ten years. Um, but uh, most of them live to the end. He's like, oh no, that's a hopeful book. <laughs> so like, okay. Um, um, yeah. When you're reading other stuff like Abercrombie or whoever, um, do you find it hard to turn up your critic brain and, and to just like immerse yourself and enjoy the book? It depends on the book. Um, okay. I think I'm drawn to very specific sorts of books. I'm reading a book called The Down Days by Ilza Hugo, mm -hmm. which is a South African author, and uh, she's very her writing is very visceral and vibrant, and brings me immediately back. I lived in South Africa for two years. Oh, yes, that's yeah, it brings me immediately back to. Um, to that milieu, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is so cool. Uh, and so I, I appreciate that writing, and I don't pay as quite as much of attention when I'm immersed in that kind of writing, right, okay. that very visceral writing. Yeah. Um, I think to some extent Joe Abercrombie does it as well, as, yeah. as you start to get very visceral into that. I, I love really good world building. Um, Trader Bear Cormorant was another one I really liked, mm -hmm. um, where there was a certain sentence uh, in the very first page, and 
that was the sentence I knew that this was right. I knew what the fuck they were doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, when I when I know when I can trust, and we talk uh, about that, that that a lot. Yeah. When you know you can trust a writer, um, it may, I think there is. There's like this feeling in me like I'm tight going in, and yeah. then when I when I realize oh they know what they're doing, yeah. I kind of I can. I can relax into it, yeah. but it takes a while to reach that point. I remember I was reading *Planet Fall* by Emma Newman. It was mm -hmm. my first book of hers I'd read, and it took me a few pages. I was yeah. like, I don't know, am I gonna? And there, I don't know. There was something just finally, I, I felt the author's like, you know, authority <laughs> or, okay. or their, yeah. their mastery <laughs> come in, and I was like, okay, yeah. she knows, she knows that this is this is good. This is interesting. There's something she's doing here that's really cool, um, okay. and that's an intuitive thing, right? Just from reading a lot. Uh, you know, I get books to blurb all the time, and you know, uh, I'll read a page, maybe two pages. Yeah. And if I'm not into it, I'm just too big. Oh, okay. you know, I have thirty books, right, a huge so you're ticket red two pages. Yeah, I do not give it a long time, okay. unless unless it's a book um, that again is already out, and all my peers are saying, or if all the readers are saying, everyone should read this. Yeah. Um, this is how you lose the time war. Yeah. I've been. I'm like on 50 pages. I think of that because I'm like I gotta finish this so I can have a conversation. Right. Because yeah. writing is about again a lot of that is the genre in the genre. We want to have conversations about these books and we want to talk about these books. Yeah. That's the whole thing with word of mouth. Yeah. Read this so we can discuss yeah, it. Exactly. Um, that is you know the the cool thing about genre. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll read stuff. You know sometimes that people are just like no 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 it's really great. Um, that I'm not necessarily this is my favorite thing, but I want to be part of those conversations. Right. Yeah. So, I'll do that. So yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the time. I don't necessarily want to monopolize. Uh, oh, I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I could talk for no, hours. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah. so I have more questions that I could, I could throw at Cameron. Is there, are there any questions from the audience? <laughs> and, and then I'll do a little thing at the end. If there aren't, I can keep going. But I want to make sure anyone here has a chance to throw a question out, if they have one. So let's keep chatting. You're having fun? Enjoying, I see no, hands. I'm, Perfect. I'm going to say I am. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, good. Um, what was I going to throw? Great brain. Did you get caught up in that, new, that like, um, what did you do over the last decade craze bullshit? Did, like, 2009, 20, did you get caught up in that? Not, not really. I mean, because that's my whole career, is the last decade. Yeah, it's the yeah. um, And so it was like, what did you do this this <coughs> decade? And I'm like, well, I had a career. That's Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so, a very weird phenomenon. I, I think if you're if you're older, uh, maybe it's, or younger, you know, um, I don't know. I was kind of at the point where it was just like, well, this was it. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, was yeah, my, yeah. my exactly. professional career. This was the... Uh, and it was, again, that was the year of my 30s, which was building this career, building my uh, day job career, which is marketing and advertising mm -hmm. writing. Um, and so that was just sort of kind of the, the building up of the career. You know, and it is funny because I do feel, and N.K. Jemison uh, again, has become, like, the master, right? And I, you yeah. can watch it happen. Um, and it was really cool. It was really satisfying. But, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years, and I'm just now feeling like I know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, I, mm -hmm. I feel like... I'm coming, yeah. you can almost feel yourself coming into your powers. <laughs> like later again, I was like, oh shit, yeah. like I, I've got this. Um, there, I'm, I'm able to see things a lot better. I have enough experience. You start to get that intuition, which we say is intuition, but it's really just you've done the work over and over and over yeah. and over. Um, you've studied and studied and studied. I've um, been studying structure for, with my agent for like the last five years, six years. Uh, and it's finally starting to, to click and to um, sort of see the, the fruits of that. Mm -hmm. Um, which is super cool. So yeah, no, I didn't. I was just like, well, yeah, I read a lot of books. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> still here. So. There's a risk that you get too re too retrospective. That's the mm. problem. too retrospective, and then you. And you're either yeah, and to, you know, it's like it's like posting pictures uh, uh, of your presence under the tree on Christmas, right? It's kind yeah. of ghost. There's some ghostness to it, where bit. especially where it's like, well, I've written ten books, and someone's like, I've written one book, and Chuck Wendig, I've written thirty-seven <laughs> books. I don't know why I've written 157 novels. So you, and then you're like, you know, because Chuck and I came up at like the same time. So oh. he's written like 25. So I'm thinking, oh, I've written, I'm on my 12th book. This is fucking writing these extra. Well, I've written plus comics. Blah, blah. Yeah, I'm like, Jesus. Can't really tell him to fuck. Um, yeah, you know, right. Um, I love Chuck. Uh, so I could actually probably. Oh, very good. Because I love. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so it is hard, and it, you know, and to be fair, I've had a day job this whole time. Yeah. Um, but uh, training, then it ends up being comparing yourself to others and, oh, well, I won this, these awards and this award. Yeah. And, uh, there was, you know, there was a point, Scalzi had said, because he used to po post his writing income uh, every year. Yeah, and there was a point, a too, a yeah, bit. there was a point where Christy finally said, you sound obnoxious. <laughs> we need to stop now. Uh, 
So let's let's not. Uh, which I think was a good comment. Again, Chrissy is she does a great job it's managing to have him. that partner. Who yeah, was, who's like, okay, yeah. sweetheart, this yeah, is too much. To um, and so I do. I think there's a point. Again, it's like again, you don't want a bitch as a writer about things, and have newer writers go yeah. fucking bitter midlister. Um, you don't want to be the bitter midlister. Uh, so I think there is a certain point where I don't want to either be like. I mean, I'm proud of what I've done, mm. um, but I don't know that it's. I don't know. It's just like that's some stuff I did. Yeah, and exactly. then I'll do more things. Yeah, and then just kind of see what Because happens. here's the here's the trick to being a writer is you everybody thinks, oh, I'm gonna write a book, I'm gonna get it published, oh, and I'll be a writer, oh, it'll be great, everything, it'll be smooth sailing from there. And it's like, no, being a writer is okay. You wrote the most brilliant book, that was the most hardest, toughest thing you've ever written. Now you got to do it again, once a year until you die. <laughs> yeah, with two like said And I pray to like, God someone buys it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and right, the most here, genius book. Yeah. yeah, but you have a person starting out here's that and goes, wait, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what that? I was talking to uh, uh, someone who just signed with my agent. She had, oh, cool. she had actually been indie before, and she rewrote the books, and they're launching with Orbit. They're very good. That's awesome. I've loved it. Um, the Wolf oh, you loved it? Yeah, yeah, the Wolf of Orin Euro, because she's talking oh, about this publicly. Yeah. I try not to say things unless it's been posted like on Twitter or Makes something. Sense. But yeah, she was just like, you know, oh, I finished this book, and you know, we finished rewriting this, and I'm finishing the third book, and then I'm like, I'm going to have to write another book. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't wait, over. Wait a like, minute. <laughs> this isn't over. Um, you know, I got to do this again. Uh, and I'm like, welcome. That realization for me, I will never forget that. Because I was like, oh, I've written a trilogy. Certainly after you've written a trilogy, all these doors were open and you'll be making more money. And something, some, you know, people will be begging for contracts, you know, all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that did not happen. <laughs> Every book became a hustle. Yeah. Uh, Every book was, you know, how do we position it? How do we pitch it? Um, I remember when Geek Feminist, I had so many great hopes and expectations for it. Um, Wait, and which we, is an amazing collection. Of books. Good! No, I'm great. Again, that, that's, that's just one of those books. Again, um, it has just turned out. So, again, it's not like it was a failure or anything. Um, but I had huge expectations for it. And that to me is, you know, you, you always have to believe every book you're going to write is going to be the most successful, wonderful thing ever. Okay. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I, I you know, had, had done all that stuff and I was just like, well, <laughs> well uh, it didn't, you know, two people, two uh, editors, which honestly only need is one, so, you know, two editors made offers on it. Mm -hmm. um, we actually went with the lower offer because of a better marketing plan, oh, uh, so we went with, we went with Tor, because uh, Tor understood that it was an ac it was an academic book for an academic right. market, and they do a limited number of hardcovers for libraries and stuff, and, oh, okay. uh, so they knew how to market. The Tor, the Tor marketing machine, yeah. if you can engage them, is very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so we went with them and uh, and yeah you know I of that that book that book's a very good example of you know I may be like oh it should have been the most crazy you know I'm so sad it didn't make all this fucking money but it changed people's lives yeah right uh, people come up to me at um, conventions and just cry they just start crying wow. I like at a signing and I'm just like. Uh, because it speaks to their experience, like I thought I was the only one. Right. Okay. A lot of it is I thought in uh, Spain I got that too. Yeah. People were because it has been published uh, in Spain as well. Um, would all come up to me and just be like, I thought I was the only one. Um, I was struggling, you know, with uh, being a nerd. I was struggling with my sexuality, which right. was a very interesting one too. Yeah. And I read this and holy shit, I didn't realize this about myself. Um, so there's a lot of things that it, it was very much about being feeling that you're part of something, yeah. feeling you're part of a community yeah, yeah. Uh, of women writers, and uh, and that has been um, really um, gratifying, right, to me yeah. as a, as a writer. And I think you know I was talking with another writer about this last night, who's published like 20 books, and we all right are trying for the breakout book. And I said, well, you know, the problem is is that we can't control that part of success metric. Yeah. What is your success metric? Yeah. You know, my success metric, I like, as long as I'm still publishing books, I'm still in the game. So that's yeah. good. As long yeah. as people still agree, yeah. you know, to pay for my stuff and not like for a dollar, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, then I feel I'm still in the game. Um, but I can't say my success metric is I have to be a New York Times bestseller by 45 well, or whatever. That's, that's, that's stupid yeah. because that you can't really control that. Yeah. And plus, New York Times bestseller things, is it's a mess. Yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of it depends on marketing. My agent has always said, you know, the only thing in her experience that has really moved copies is them printing literally tens and thousands of arcs 
and sending out tens yeah. of thousands. So unless they're willing to put a lot of money behind it, yeah. um, so you just like you have to actually invest in marketing. And really, you're probably only going to get that if um, you know they pay a bazillion dollars for it. Yeah. Uh, and, and it helps if it's a good book, and it's the right time, and it's the right place. So there's all these different factors. It helps to be good. Right. Oh yeah. To be good <laughs> is the baseline. Yeah. If and you then suck, it's it's, it's so, yeah. You suck it'll be harder. <laughs> but that's the thing. If you suck, you can still. We as we all know. That's you the can point still publish that. and make a bazillion dollars that's because right. you hit some kind of zeitgeist or um, emotional thing. I my Asia and I were actually talking about Twilight. So I'm just like that's, I can. I'm like I don't understand. And she said, you know what it was? Um, it was very good at invoking the emotion of falling in love for the first time. And she said there was something it just really hit with young people, especially young women, um, and it, it just hit them. It was really well crafted in that way. Everything else, uh, um, and that to me is you never know when you're going to hit Titanic. I think when Titanic oh, came out, yeah. there was a similar like, oh yeah. shit, I saw it eleven times. Um, so so there's something that happens emotionally and culturally, and that stuff we can't really control. So your book's going to come out when it's going to come out. Um, so all you can do is write the book of your heart, uh, which again, Rosia Vega talks uh, a lot about uh, that she writes, she likes to write the book of her heart, um, because then at least you take, we always have to remember the, the satisfaction, the ultimate satisfaction has to be coming from the work. You're not going to get external validation for your work. You're not going to get external validation of yourself and your talent or who you are. Um, you have to really love the work. And that kind of goes back to why the fuck are we doing this? Yeah. It's because we actually like writing. Yeah. And you know, it was funny um, because I'd been hating writing Broken Hell. You know, it was, I was angry at the book. I didn't, I, the manuscript was shit and I didn't want to do anything with it. And my agent finally said, we're taking out the schedule. You know, yeah. we're not going to worry about it. Go write Light Brigade. And I started to write Light Brigade and I realized as I was writing it, like, I enjoy writing. <laughs> like it was, I've been for years just churning and going through, and I was like, this is really Wait fun. Yeah. And these oh characters, God. and shit's blowing up, and I'm you know, doing these cool timelines, and, and I actually enjoy the physical process of writing. Um, it's publishing I hate. <laughs> it's the bullshit of publishing. Yeah. That's what I don't like. Yeah. And so reminding myself, it's don't put it on the work. Don't yeah. put a hatred of publishing on the work. Okay. That's that's move it away. It's it's actually um, and remember that you're here for the work. You're here because you enjoy writing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. do really enjoy it. Um, and so reminding myself of that, and again, it helped to just switch pot. She was right. I was yeah. so mad at her. I had like a drink at that point, and she calls me. This isn't very good. Um, and I'm like, we're shipping it, Hannah. We're gonna ship this book. I just need it is thirty thousand more words. It'll be fine. She's like, I think we should take it out of the schedule. I'm like, I'll sleep on it. And then yeah, I emailed her. I'm like, you're right. Oh, fuck yeah. So um, and it was it was the right decision. And then once I cleared out the cobwebs and remembered I liked writing, yeah, uh, it was much easier to come back and, and finish *Birth of Heavens*. Awesome. So yeah. Um, okay, we're almost out of time. There's a thing that I like to do at the end of all of my interviews, mm. which is like super rapid fire, like first thing off the top of your head, short answer sort of thing. I totally stole it from Larry. <laughs> all King the answers now. are fuck. Done. <laughs> 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 they might no. be. Okay, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I tell you, again, I totally stole it from Larry King now. I hope you never noticed. Oh, that. yeah. Um, so just the first thing that comes to your mind. No pressure. So it's, like, it's like our thing the other day. Okay. Uh, favorite character on The Witcher? <gasps> First thing that comes to your mind, don't overthink it. Uh, I, Renfrey. <laughs> She's my wife. Uh, We're married. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Um, what show do you want to binge next? The Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be four. That'll be the four. I think you Literally, I put it off. Seven or something? Maybe I'm up to seven. seven. I don't even remember. No, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Um, describe Nyx in one word. Oh my god. Conan. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, author you admire? Uh, author I admire. You know, Kate Elliott, uh, oh, okay. she, she gave me She's a lovely. lot of really great advice yeah. with how to, again, sustain a career, like we talk about. Yeah. Oh, how yeah. we, how She's, done, She's done, done it. Some, and when yeah. it was real sexist, it would be worse sexist, yeah. right? Uh, and She's been a real cool person to um, be a touchstone for, for my career stuff. I really admire her. She's thing. cool. Yeah, I got to panel with her here, actually, a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. She's lovely. Yeah. yeah. Um, something you haven't written yet, but really would like to, either genre or structure. Oh, yeah. I want to do an 80s murder mystery, like a weird 80s nice. murder mystery. So, like, you know, Stranger Things meets, like, Girl on the Train or something oh, nice. like that. Oh, okay. yeah. That sounds cool. Um, something you haven't written yet and don't think that you could pull off? Pull off anything. <laughs> <laughs> I pull off Light Brigade, man! Man! Right. Multiple timelines! That's uh, the no. first time it I've would, gotten that answer, It would have to do anything, yeah. Um, 
I mean, I, you know, I was just going to say, you know, maybe like funny fantasy stuff, but I've, I've written yeah. some funny fantasy. It wasn't right. great, but I wrote right. it. So you can do it. <laughs> all right, all right. So camera really can do anything. I can do anything! <laughs> well, and I have the day job, right? Where there's like, write a radio script, write a oh, white okay. paper, and they literally, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I just write anything. So right, okay. that's kind of right, how I am right, here. I'll give you that. Um, best book you, or sorry, I should say best. Uh, favorite book you've read recently? <laughs> Favorite book? Just, just, just the uh, I have to say, yeah, uh, uh, um, The Down Days, uh, it'll say Hugo. Okay. Yeah. Um, favorite short story of your, like that you've written of yours? Um, and you, I know. Yeah, and you, I know. And you, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, which I got to read. Yeah, the one that. Yeah, I got to read that. Yeah, yeah. Um, best part of being a writer? Writing. Nice. Yeah. Worst part of being a writer? Publishing. Who would you cast in Zombie on a Hot Tin Roof? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Which, if you weren't in our flash fiction, they got very I know, no Zombie on a Hot Tin Roof. As the zombie or as the person doing both. the zombie? Both. Um, as the zombie, who would I want to see um, murdered on a hot tin roof? <laughs> <laughs> Careful. I was going to say, yeah, there's just so many people. Uh, I could see murdered on a hot tin roof. You know, I ran into that actually when we were trying to cast for this pilot we're working on. And oh, who would you? What kind of young actresses would you like a short version? Yeah. I don't know any fucking. <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you, Queen Calanthe, you know, Jody, yeah. Give me a list with some photos or something. You can, you, know, can, you right. can pass. You can give up. Oh, there we go, Jody. Uh, you know, Queen Calanthe would uh, okay. be a great zombie, actually. Oh, She'd yeah, be I fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I, I think yeah. she would. She would kick some ass. She'd probably end up eating the. Again, she would end up eating. Person trying to fry her in the hot tin yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Cool. And then the very last one, uh, one last piece of uh, writing advice for our audience. Write the book of your heart. Rosia Vega. Um, again, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how our stuff's going to be uh, interpreted or, or whatever. But you take pleasure in the work itself. Write the book that you want to write. Write the book of your heart. So. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. I cannot believe we were already out of time. I know, man. That, that was excellent. That just. That just. I told you I can just yeah, yeah. Well, that, that yeah. worked out perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Cameron. Thank you. For Thank coming. you guys all for coming.